Hey guys, today we're going to do uh, fun little puzzles, we'll call them. And the chapter title is Factoring Trinomials, which, don't forget what a trinomial is. It's, a, it's an expression with three, fig, with three excuse me, uh, terms to it. So all we're going to do is first, uh, we're going to go at some point backwards, but let's go forwards this time. And here's what we're going to do. You look at this. And you, I'm just going to make up some numbers to stick in here. I'll put, I don't know, a 2 and a 5. And up over here, I'll put, a, I don't know, a 7 and an 8. We'll do that. We'll do each one of these one at a time. But let's go ahead and multiply this. Go ahead and pause on your screen there and uh, multiply this together and see what you get. Okay, I'm assuming you paused here. We're going to get x squared, x times x. Then we're going to get 5x. Okay, then we're done with that x. Then we're going to get 2 times x, which is 2x. So 5x plus 2x is 7x. And the last thing we get is 35. No, we're not going to get 35. We're going to get 10. All right? And notice, you know what? Hold, hold that thought one second. Go ahead and pause again. And now we're going to multiply x plus 7 times x plus 8. So go ahead and do that. Okay, assuming you paused it here. First thing is going to be an x squared, and we get x times 8, which is 8x, of course. Well, we're done with that, and we have a 7x. We add those two together. 8x plus 7x is 15x. Then we have 7 times 8 is 56. Okay, now just notice two things. When they give you x plus 2 times x plus 5, this number that you get in the middle, the 7 is that plus that, and this number is that times that. Same thing happens over here. Uh, when you say x plus 7 times x plus 8, the number you get in the middle, the coefficient to the x, is 7 plus 8. And the last number you get in the trinomial is 7 times 8. So go ahead and make up any two numbers you want. In fact, you can even make up a negative number for one of these if you want. So make up two numbers here and pause it and uh, multiply them out. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it. And you will see again that the middle number, that the coefficient here, is this number you put here plus that number there. And the last number, which is just the constant, will be this number times that number. And we're going to use that information, and we're going to go backwards from now on. And here's an example of what we'll do. You can take a second and copy this down. Right? Don't be intimidated by the minus uh, symbol. It's okay. Same kind of thing. What we're going to do is take this trinomial, because look, we, have it, we start with the trinomial, now, and a second ago, we ended with trinomials when you multiply those together. So all we're doing is going backwards. So we're going to start with this trinomial, and we're going to factor this into two binomials. Every single time, the first term in those two binomials will be the x. It might be an a or a y or something like that, but usually it's x. Okay? Now we need to know two things. Okay? Look at this middle number. It's a negative 14, and this number is a negative 15. So we know, based on what we did on this last uh, screen here, that this last number is going to be these two numbers multiplied together, and this number is going to be those two numbers added together. So that's all we're looking for. It's like a puzzle. So we need to figure out two numbers. Those are the numbers that go here and here. Those two numbers multiply to give you that number. And the same two numbers add to give you the negative 14. So first thing you should think of is, well, if I got two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 15, well, the only way two numbers multiply to give you a negative is if one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Because if you got two negatives and multiply together, it's a positive. So we need to figure out two numbers that multiply to give us negative 15 and at the same time add to give, a, uh, to give us negative 14. You can just make a list of all the factors of negative 15 if you want. You can go. 5 and negative 3. You can go negative 5 and 3. You can just do the opposite every time. You can go, uh, you know, 15 and negative 1. You go negative 15 and 1. And you can look at this list all up and down and go, well, there's only one of that set that's going to add up to give me negative 14. And there they are. Negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. So we're going to have to have that, uh, the negative attached to the 15, so it'll be right there and have the positive attached to the 1, which is right there. And that is your answer. Now, in, in the back of the book, you see this as an answer. x minus 15 times x plus 1. 
Well, does it matter what order things are if you multiply them? In other words, 7 times 8, is that any different from 8 times 7? Obviously no. So it doesn't matter here either. So in other words, if you get this as your answer there, and the book says that, you got it. No problem. doesn't matter. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Go ahead and take a sec. Copy this down. All right, we're going to go backwards. And again, you're going to find out which two binomials will give you this trinomial. Of course, start with your x's. Now you need to go, go up here. Okay, I need two numbers. This number and that number need to add up to positive 3. Those two numbers also need to multiply to give me negative 10. Or in this case, you. Negative 10. Okay. Well, if you got two numbers that multiply to give you negative 10, you know it's going to have to be a positive and you know it's going to have to be a negative. Okay, so let's just start listing off. You tell me, what are, you mean a pair of numbers that multiply to give you negative 10. Okay, good, that's right. Negative 10 and 1, if, if on the chance that you said negative 10 and 1. You could have also said 10 and negative 1. Those, now, the question is, do either one of those, if you add them together, give you positive 3? Ne negative 10 plus 1, negative 9. Nope. Ne uh, 10 plus negative 1, that's positive 9. Nope. So we need to go with two other ones. Oh, wait a minute. We got one. We got negative 5 and 2. Does that give you, if you add those together, positive 3? You go, nope. Well, it gives me negative 3. Then if, whenever you see that, just go, ah, I'm just going to change the signs of those. So I got a 5 and I got a negative 2. Make sure you put it in the right place. The 5 is the positive. The negative 2 is the, the second term. And all you need to do is make sure that, again, if you see these reversed as far as... Now, you don't, you don't want to go like this. Don't, don't get confused. When I say it's okay if they're switched, I do not mean this. No. That's negative 5 plus 2. That gives you negative 3. That will not work for this. But if you do see this as your answer in the back of the book... Oops, I just blew that one. That's supposed to be a 2. x minus 2 times x plus 5. If you see this in the back of your book... That just means you have, you know, two numbers multiplied together in a different order. It doesn't matter what order you multiply them. But there's your answer. That's factory. Okay, we'll try one more. And this looks kind of funky. You tell me what's different about this. That's right. As long as you said that wasn't in descending exponent order, which I think you, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So first thing you're going to do is just put this in descending exponent order. Well, there's the biggest exponent, x squared. There's the second one, negative 5x. And there's the third one, all right? And we know what we're doing now, right? We're going to go two binomials, x and an x. Now, here's the trick. You need two numbers that add up to negative 5. You also need two numbers that multiply to give you negative, or excuse me, positive 6. Now, there's only one way that you can have a pair of numbers where they add up to a negative and they multiply to give you positive. You don't want to go, oh good, plus this and that, because yeah, plus something and plus something will multiply to give you a plus, but they won't add up to give you a negative. So you probably see that you're going to have to have two negatives, right? Because if two negatives are multiplied, they give you a positive, and if two negatives are added, they give you a negative. So we can look at this and go, okay, well, what are some factors of Positive 6 that are negatives. So I got negative 2 and negative 3. Does that work? Let's see, negative 2, negative 3, that, that positive 6. Negative 2 plus negative 3, that's negative 5. Negative, oh, that's it. That works. So x minus 2, x minus 3. Or if you want, x minus 3 times x minus 2. Either one of those will work. Okay, that's the whole way you do it. So just little puzzles you're doing. All right, try one more. And this is again out of order. Out of order. So let's put it in order. Don't like this. X squared goes first. 6 goes next. 5 goes last. This is the kind of problem sometimes it's intimidating. You go, what? This is weird. But this is a super easy one. These are all pluses. So first off, you know these are all going to be pluses inside here. The second thing is, well, there's only two numbers that multiply to give you you know, 5. That's, there's only 5 and a 1, and that is it. Now, just check ourselves. Does positive 5 plus positive 1 equal positive 6? And of course, the answer is yes. So, okay. And there we go. All right. Let's try the practice problems and uh, pause it here and try A. 
Okay, A, obviously we need two things. We need these uh, numbers to multiply to give us a negative, which tells us immediately one of them has to be positive, one has to be negative. We also want these two numbers to add up to a negative one. They didn't put a one in there, but you can put a one in there if you want to. Well, what two factors of four, negative 42 will add together to give you a negative one? Probably you remember your times tables, you know, 42 is six times seven, right? So to, to add up to a negative one, you're gonna have to go, that's a plus six, and a minus seven because six plus negative seven is negative one and plus they also multiply to give you negative 42, okay? All right, try, this is, B is a little weird, but try B, see what you get. Okay, assuming you paused it and unpaused it. All right, we got an X here and we got an X here and we got the same thing, right? If you have two numbers that multiply give you negative, one has to be positive, one has to be negative, all right? You probably see again, this is gonna be a six, now, of course, this is a positive one this time. This will be a 6 and a 7 as well. This time, to get a two numbers that add together to give you a positive one, you're going to have to have a positive 7 and this time a negative 6. Okay, so those, that's your answer. And again, if you put, if the book, back of the book says, for example, on one you do in the future, x, time, or, or x minus 6 times x plus 7, fine, no big deal. Just make sure it doesn't say x plus 6 and x minus 7 because that won't add up to give you a positive one. All right, pause it and try C. All right, we'll do it again. We got X as we know up front, and of course we see two numbers that multiply to give you a negative, so one has to be a positive, one has to be a negative, all right? So we need two numbers. They uh, multiply to give you a negative 16, and they also add to give you a negative, which means that the negative number is gonna have to have a bigger absolute value than the positive number. So let's just start listing off the so what times what gives me negative 16? Well, I got negative 4 times 4. That gives me, if you add up those, that gives me 0. That doesn't work. How about negative 16 times 1? Add those up together, gives you negative 15. That won't work. Uh, 16 and negative 1, that adds up to give you 15. That won't work. What else is there? There's 8 and 2, right? Okay, so we need an 8 and a 2, but we need to make sure one of these is negative because it needs to multiply to give you a negative. So we're going to choose negative 8, right? Because negative 8 times 2 is negative 16, but negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6, and that's exactly what we want. So negative 8, we're going to put the negative there, and the positive 2 goes there. And again, if you put x minus 8 times x plus 2, you're totally fine because it's the same thing. Okay, that is it for today. Lots of these... Uh, Lots of these examples in your problem set. You'll have a lot of practice on these. So go at it. Make sure you know your times tables pretty well because that really helps. See you all next time.